This is a demonstration on how we're going to program this part on the Herco Ultimax programming system that comes with Herco CNC mill machines on this control. I'm doing it on a laptop, so a few of the buttons are a little bit different, but I'm going to reference some buttons in particular. This button down here on the screen, if you can see where my cursor is, is the input key which I'll be pushing a lot and this button over here is the review key which I'll be pushing a lot and we'll be showing some stuff that will come up on the graphic screen like this okay I'm gonna now go into my print and look at it and what we want to do is mill the outside of the block that is um, 10 and a quarter by uh, 7.05 in the Y so I'm going to pop programming on the Herco control and I'm going to say it's a new data block I'm going to do some milling so I pick the milling soft key over on the right side of the screen over here and I'm going to pick frame so I can mill the outside of that part now if I look at my print my reference corner is 4.3374 so I'm going to put negative 4.3374 in the X and the Y it's 5179 so I'm going to say negative 3.5179 the X length is 10.25 so over in the X length field I'm going to put 10.25 and the Y length of my print is 7.05 so I'm going to put 7.05 I'm going to start 50 thousandths above and I'm going to machine that negative 750 deep. I'm going to put a little uh, radius on there of 20 thousandths on the corners. I've come down to the bottom of my screen over here and the tool. I'm going to hit select from tool list or which I've set up. I'm going to grab my half inch end mill and my milling type, whether I want to cut the inside or the outside. I want to cut the outside of this frame. It calculates my mill feed and my feed rate. If I don't want to take it all at once, I can give it a peck depth of 200 thousandths. I'll give it a plunge feed of 5 inches a minute. And because I'm pecking it down, I'm going to go to my finishing tab and tell it to finish with the same tool. I'm going to pick the half inch end mill and I'm going to get a faster plunge feed. It's the only thing I'm going to give difference. Now if I go into my drawer icon and I hit draw, it draws up my frame for me. I can rotate that around. Make sure I get the stock in all the corners, which it seems like I have. I set that stock size up in part setup. I'm going to go back to my input screen, and I'm going to go to my next block. If I look at my print now, I have a contour here that I want to machine in and leave this standing up as an island. I'm going to start at 12 o'clock right at the top of this radius. Part zero is in the center of the piece. So the radius is 3.91. So when I go to my Herco program and, and I ask it to do some milling and I tell it to do lines and arcs, this is basically what you pick to machine a contour. I'm going to start at 0 in the X in 3. Point, excuse me, I forget what the number was. 3.19 in the Y. I'm going to start 50 thousands up and I'm going to go down negative 0.375 is the depth of my pocket. I'm going to use that same tool that I used to rough the outside of it, which is my uh, tool number five, my half inch end mill. I'm going to peck that every 0.1875. I'll do it in two passes, and I'm going to plunge at five inches a minute. And since I want to take a finish pass, I go and tell it tool number five for my finish pass. And my plunge speed on that is going to be 99 inches a minute. I'm going to go back to my roughing tab and tell it I want to do the compensation to the left as I walk around the part. When I get the whole thing contoured, I'm going to switch it to pocket boundary so it will machine all the material inside. But for now, I'm just going to say to the left. I'm going to go to my next segment. And I'm going to ask it to do an arc. If I look at my print, if I want to go around this way, it's counterclockwise. So I go back to my Herco programming software and I hit the soft key for counterclockwise. I don't know the X and Y endpoint. If you look on the print, it's not specified. 
it will end approximately over here. So I'm going to use the Herco software to calculate the x and y endpoint. I'm going to leave it blank. When I tell it the center point of 0 on the x, 0 on the y, because I told it the start point, it automatically calculates the radius. I'm going to go to my next segment, which is a line. If I look at the print, segment number 2 is a line. It's going to go into this arc. I don't know anything about that line. I know uh, it's tangent to the arc. That's all I know. So I'm going to go to my next segment. I have a lot of math that hasn't been calculated, which is an arc counterclockwise. Once again, on this arc, I do not know the endpoints, but I know the center points, 4.06 in the X and 0 in the Y. So I'm going to go back to my Herco software, and I'm going to say 4.06 in the X, 0 in the Y, and the radius is 1.12. When I give it that information, it's calculated a whole bunch of information. If I hit draw, you'll see that it calculates as much information as it can. It doesn't calculate the end point of the arc yet because it doesn't have, it doesn't know yet. And it's also telling me when I hit draw that there's an error in segment three, bad data in the contour. That's because it does not have an end point. So I'm going to jump to that block. I'm going to go to my next segment, which is going to be an arc. And this arc is clockwise, and the only thing I know about this arc, if you look at the print, it's 0.5. If I look over here, you can see it's this arc right over here. It's the only thing I know about it. Finally, I'm going to end up with an arc that ends back up at the top of my circle. So when I go back, I'm going to say next segment, arc, counterclockwise. X endpoint is 0, Y endpoint is going to be what the radius is. The radius is... 3.19, so I'm going to say 3.19. My center point is 0 on the x, 0 on the y, calculates my radius, calculates my start points. If I hit draw, you'll see that it calculates my whole contour. I can rotate that around to get a better look. And it looks good to me. Now I want to remove all the material out of the inside of the part. So I go to my review key, which is a very handy key on the Herco. It happens to be uh, right up on the dashboard over here. It's the review button right there. And when you hit that button, it's the equivalent of hitting this button here. It gives you a list of basically what you have for data blocks. So I'm going to double click on block number two, segment zero. And where it says mill and contour to the left, I'm going to make it a pocket boundary. When I do that, and I hit draw, it now pockets the whole contour out. Now, the only problem is I'm supposed to have an island in the middle of that. So I'm going to go back to pot programming. I'm going to go to the next block. I'm going to ask it to mill. It's a circle. So I pick circle. The center point is 0 on the x, 0 on the y, and the radius is a half an inch. And I'm not going to give it any z information or any tooling information. I'm just going to come over here and say it's a pocket island. And when I hit draw, you will see the power of the Herco Ultimax with the ulti pocket option. I'm going to go to select view and I'm going to say all views. This is the exact same software that runs on the new WinMax control on the Herco VM1, VM2, VM3 and all the uh, VMX series machines. This control that I've showed you is the control for the VM1's single screen control. We have a dual screen version also. Thank you for your time and I hope you found this video uh, useful.